Have you ever considered that some people experience the sensations of orgasm in childbirth and others feel pleasure and love? Would you like to learn more about orgasmic birth? Hi, I'm Deborah Pascali Benaro, founder and director of Orgasmic Birth and host of Orgasmic Birth, the podcast. Today, we're joined by a friend and colleague, Renee Rodriguez, joining us from Mexico. Renee was amazed to find out how beautiful, empowering, and even orgasmic giving birth could be. She believes the world should know that it's also possible to be born with pleasure. For this reason, she trained as a doula and has dedicated her life to accompany other women to create well-being in their pregnancy so they can begin and live their motherhood fully and pleasurably. It was so special for me, Renee, to meet you. I still remember 2019 in Belgium at Midwifery Today Conference, and we were sitting upstairs. I can see exactly where we were. And you shared your stories of your two orgasmic births. And like, even thinking about it, I was there smiling with delight. And then in 2020, you joined me for my first virtual birth doula workshop. So I am so honored to welcome you today to share with everyone listening about your story and your journey with birth. Welcome. Thank you so much, Deborah. And I must say I'm the one honored to be now in a podcast with you because I remember hearing you in the podcast, I will hear all your interviews, your podcast, your, and I was having so much inspiration that exactly in that, uh, in, in the midwifery today, I was seeing you like a star, like, wow, Deborah is there. I would love to talk to her, you know? And then when I approached you and I found such a lovely woman, so open, so approachable, and that you were interviewing me and I could tell my stories. That was really for me a dream. So I'm I'm so happy really that I can share this because it was a dream for me to share my birth stories, but also to share it in your platform. So thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much. And I have to say, you say having two orgasmic childbirth transformed your life and gave you a mission to tell the world and what women can do giving birth with pleasure and joy. So can you tell us a little bit about each of your orgasmic births? Describe them. By all means. And, uh, you know, when people think about orgasmic birth, they, they think, ah, it's an orgasm in birth or it's when the baby goes out, you get an orgasm. So I want also to talk about that because actually I had both. I did have sexual orgasms during my labor and I went into this orgasmic state that is giving birth and also when the baby came out was amazing. So just wanted to give that frame because you can have both. You don't have to have a sexual orgasm to have an orgasmic birth, but it's totally possible. <laughs> to Definitely. So. so, well, in my first birth, I was completely disconnected of uh, motherhood. I was a businesswoman. I was a director of a company. And I was more thinking in the meeting the budget of the month than having my baby because that's the ambience I, I was. Uh, life took me. I was living in Asia. In that moment, I was living in Singapore. And we moved due to my work to Mexico City. And that's where I said, okay, maybe I should start uh, learning a bit about birth because I know nothing. So I took a beautiful course that was a uh, prenatal yoga kundalini uh, with a friend. And I also got the birth uh, preparation. And I remember I had uh, another couple that they say they will have a home birth. And the first thing I thought is, oh, these hippies, you know, because they were yogis and all that. I never considered to have a home birth because for me that was a bit of hippie. But in the course, when they start explaining what was the interventions in birth, my husband that had a previously wife and a childbirth uh, that was actually very, very medicalized, he realized the first birth was not a natural birth as he thought, it was a vaginal birth, but very medicalized. 
So he was the one defending me, like even with the doctors, he was questioning the doctors. And I say this because women, when we are pregnant, we don't know what we're walking into. We don't know what they can, we can take the course and they can explain, but only when you leave it, you really understand. So I had this chance of he understanding what was all these interventions and really trying to protect me not to having. So suddenly the doctor said like, okay, she was not feeling like good connection with my partner mainly and say, well, why don't you try a home birth? And then my husband that is from the Netherlands, he says, yes, I was born at home. Why not? And was the first time I saw him so relaxed so I said, okay, let's go and see a doctor that does home birth. I was still like, okay, let's go to a doctor because for me, a midwife was something I didn't know and didn't truly understand. So we decided to go with a female doctor and the connection with her was completely different because there was no fear. There was not, for example, he asked, would you cut her? And she said, well, that's not needed. All the others were saying like, Yes, if I have to, if baby is in risk, if she is at risk, you know, they always put you this word, like if I decide as a doctor it's needed and if there's a risk, I will do it. And she was like, so like, no, that's not needed. So the, the connection with her was totally different. And I say that because as women, we really need to listen our intuition. That's the first thing. We need to feel how our body is feeling with the doctor that is defending us if we feel hurt if we feel that they are really accompanying us or they are just directing us because that is really important i remember my husband just by asking questions he will say no we have to change the doctors and i was like why she will cut you open and i was like no oh. and then i realized and say yeah that is true so in this i prepare for what I wanted, we decided to have a home birth. And I think this preparation is very important. I said, no one can teach you how to give birth. They don't have to tell you how to breathe or, or which postures to have, because that is something we know. But we do need to know what is the medical system and what happens once you enter into the hospital and what is the process and the interventions and what you want and what you don't want, because if you don't know that, and even if you think I will do my yoga and my meditations, but you don't prepare of who is accompanying you at birth, whatever you have as wisdom will just go. So I was, uh, we decide, we, we were informed and we consciously decide to have a home birth. We even thought that for us, it, it was less risky to have a home birth than a, a hospital birth because unfortunately in Mexico, the rate of interventions is huge and the cesarean rate is also huge. So my husband and, us, and me, we felt uh, better at home. But I still didn't really know what birth was. And uh, I must admit, I just let myself go. I was mainly by the end of the pregnancy because I stopped working and I was feeling to my kundalini uh, yoga I started really connected with with my body and also with my husband so I remember when it was like we were approaching due date we were like enjoying our, our last days of uh, of a couple and we were having fantastic sex and I Say fantastic because the sensations I was having in my body were beautiful. The orgasms that I was getting were like much more powerful than a normal orgasm when I was not pregnant. I could feel like the blood in, in, in my vagina, in, in, in my body, you know, and it was beautiful. So I remember one uh, night we were uh, having sex and I had a, a beautiful uh, orgasm and I really felt like all night I was having these contractions but it was like these contractions of orgasm because in an orgasm our, our uh, uterus has contractions so I remember waking up in the morning and feeling this sense of nice just a nice feeling so then I woke up in the morning and my water broke and I have to say this 
that for me was a very important stage because I call my doctor and instead of she tells me, oh, you have to come to the hospital and rush and she just said, perfect, enjoy your day, you know? So I was not having any more contractions. I went and enjoyed the day. We went out in the park with my family. We had lunch. I was really very present and I was not thinking how much time it will take. I knew baby will uh, be born that day because the water broke, but I was not in, in the pressure of time. So like around six o'clock, we say, okay, bye to everybody. And we will enjoy our last uh, night together as a couple. And I must admit, I was feeling very horny. I had a lot of sexual desire. And it was not desire of penetration. And also because my water broke, there's nothing that should go inside the vagina. Not the, the, not the penis of my husband, but neither the uh, fingers of the doctors, you know? So I, I, I asked my husband to give me what I call a fast and furious, that is just a clitoral orgasm by, by stimulating the clitoris and, 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 the, and the breast. And he just started touching me and the sensations were wow, like really electric in, in, in my body. And then I got a very powerful and beautiful orgasm. This is totally a sexual orgasm. And from that, my labor kicked. So I started having like uh, this uh, more uh, steady and intensive construction, but I cannot tell was painful. So I called my doula and my doula told me, ah, don't worry, you can still talk. So this will take time. And actually my doula had a 36 hour labor and I around me heard about these stories of having two days of labor and always these uh, dramatic stories. So I remember when I start feeling these sensations, I said to myself, okay, if I'm gonna be here for more than 20 hours, then I would just, surrender and I was just there present I went into into my my bath now I know I shouldn't have gone really into the water <laughs> but I was in my bath I, I didn't went into the birding pool and I just let myself completely go my doula took two hours to come if I will be worried when she was coming and for sure I will panic but I was just in my own zone so I was not worried from her and when she entered she started talking to me and I was in my bath and I could see there was um, entrance of, of light in the top of my bath and I could see the, the light of a full moon. So I told her, oh, have you seen the moon? And she noticed immediately that I was in transition, you know, that I was already in a altered state. So I she just it. turned off the lights. <laughs> it was fantastic. She just turned off the lights went out of the room and then the stress was out you know they never told me because then she said okay we need to call the doctor now so my husband couldn't even dial the phone nothing you know and then the doctor arrived like one hour later and she come in and told me oh you're fully dilated and for me it was really like shocking like okay where is the pain where is the you know for me it was it had like four hours passed from nine o'clock to one that I was having this uh, very active labor, but I was just feeling beautiful sensations. I was just, maybe I don't even remember. I was like in another uh, world. And when me, my doctor came in, I felt like so relaxed, say, okay, she's here. So, and she told me baby will come anytime. So like labor stopped a bit. And I remember she came in and told me, well, I see labor is slowing down. Why don't you touch your breast? I was like, why I touch my, I should touch my breast? And she said, because that will help you with the oxytocin. So I read a bit about that, but I was not conscious like I am now. <laughs> like, can my husband do it? Yes, of course. So my husband entered into the, the, bath with me and we start kissing and he just started caressing me and it was really very gentle it was not like a, no I was super gentle and I started having really like electric currents in 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 my body and then I felt my my body pushing I, I felt this sensation of pushing that I was not uh trying and this is 
something that it happens naturally. A lot of women ask me now that I'm doula, ah, but how I have to push? They are actually in a physiological birth. You don't have to push. Your body will just uh, guide, guide you through. So I, I remember just feeling my body uh, push in. And then I, I stood up and, and for my husband, that's the only thing that my uh, doctor told me, like, ah, why don't you stand up so your baby can really uh, get well into the pelvis? Because I've been a lot of time uh, down in the, in, the, in the bath. We didn't even have the time to move to the birthing pool that, uh, we were, that the uh, doctor brought. And uh, so I was holding my husband, actually, I, I was holding him so hard that the next day he had more pain than me. <laughs> but also this connection of holding him, dancing, feeling some clothes. He was also in the oxytocin flow. There was not a moment he was under stress. And then I just felt, okay, now baby's coming. And this is something I also want to tell women. Because in birth, it's not about not feeling anything. It's about feeling everything. Because it's so beautiful when you know exactly where your baby is, when he's coming. So suddenly I, I touched my vagina and I could feel him. And that was also orgasmic. It was a rush of oxytocin for me. And I, I said, my husband touch him. And then also when my husband touched him, it was like, wow, he was also in this flow of oxytocin. And then I noticed at that moment, my doula entered to the bath, my uh, doctor, and also I had a pediatrician and she was pregnant, like nine months pregnant. So it was also lovely. I felt like a beautiful ambience. I was not feeling um, observed or disturbed. Nobody was talking. They were just like there protecting me. And I felt this female presence also so beautiful. And also feeling them, I knew my baby was coming. So in that moment, I feel a few seconds, the fire, um, no, the arc of fire. Sorry. Yes. In, in, that, in that moment, I felt this arc of fire, but it was really a few seconds. And for me, more of thinking about the feeling I was feeling in that moment, no. for me, more than thinking of the sensation I was feeling for me was beautiful to know baby was coming out you know it was really beautiful and I was not pushing I was just I, I was singing down like uh... by the way all the birth I was also singing or or uh, doing like noises that it will come through uh, and then baby came like very fast when he came out. So that, that's also a, a feeling of release, but I wouldn't say that is your guess. And some people think that in that moment when you feel that release of baby come, yes, it feels super uh, pleasurable sensation, but it's more the state you are. When I'm talking about uh, orgasmic birth, is this alterated state of mind with all your hormones are working and you really feel in another world where there's no time and dimension. And getting into this state is regardless whether you had an orgasm, like a sexual orgasm or not. I think any woman that has the right ambience and that has the connection within her will get to this orgasmic uh, state in birth. And this is proven and you have you have all the theory in your podcast about this. And I want to say when my baby came out, he had two times the cord around him. And there was no issue that the doctor just, that's the only thing the doctor did. Baby came out, she took like very gentle the cord uh, around his, his neck and gave it to, to us. My husband was also receiving him. So I want to say this because the cord in most of the cases is also not a problem uh, at all. I'm very happy I didn't know about that and I didn't worry about that because in the doctors in the hospital, they can make a whole issue about that. But a part of this beautiful and orgasmic experience, uh, what was also beautiful is that after birth, we moved to the, to the bed and 
uh, I put the baby in my belly and we let him go off uh, and, 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 and find the nipple. And this is such important state. And this is orgasmic also for the baby because that is the moment where he's connecting and when he's letting also his oxytocin and his hormones of well-being, um, uh, I, I forgot the word, segre segregate. I will say it again. How you say they release this? I will say just release. I was thinking yeah, in the it's However, way. you feel comfortable. <laughs> Thank you. So, and the the other orgasmic state that sometimes is denied is when the baby is born. That is orgasmic for mom and for baby. And many times we caught. What we did is I uh, put the baby in the tummy. He was connected with the placenta and we let him go up looking for the for the nipple and and letting him like connecting to me to the world letting also also as a family uh getting in love you know and and that is such an important moment and such orgasmic also for for the for the baby then the baby took like 40 minutes to really to go up and to connect and to finally start latching. And these suctions, when they start latch, latching, is like when the body knows, okay, baby is feeding, so placenta, I don't need you anymore, you can go out. And then you have again, because of the oxytocin, it creates the baby being latched to the breast, then you get again this oxytocin flowing and again the uterus contracting and then the placenta goes like uh, we birth the placenta also lovely and peacefully. And I want to talk about this because sometimes that is forgotten like baby's born and we want to cut the cord and we want to revive him and, and also sometimes in convert we want to take pictures and talk and, and we cut these parts that really takes women to these higher alterated states where it's completely orgasmic. So it's not only that peak of orgasm that we think like a masculine orgasm is not a peak, it's really a stage that actually keeps on building until baby and mom are falling asleep, you know, <laughs> they are uh, having uh, really uh, breast milk and, and, and having this connection and then, and then fall asleep so it's important to talk about that stage that sometimes is completely forgotten so beautiful Renee you put so many nuggets in there right and I just love how you went from kind of that sexual orgasm and at the end of pregnancy right just so people listening know like you've really expanded your blood supply so for many people right orgasms the end of pregnancy are some of the most expansive and to begin kind of your labor journey but I loved all the other ways that you brought that oxytocin and love and connection and nipple stimulation, but just that emotional space too, that you and your husband were in that allowed this like deep transformational orgasmic birth and then your babe. So that's birth one, but I know that you went on to have another, do you mind sharing like now you've had this experience. Did you do anything different the next time to prepare? How did you get ready for another birth? Well, well with my second birth, I was much more secure, maybe too overconfident. Like I said, ah, this is going to be easy, fast. Uh, everything's going to be fine. So I, I, I had a lot of confidence that it was good. I was first living in France, and for me, it was very difficult to find a home birth and a midwife that will accompany me in a home birth. And that was very frustrating because the system of France, well, it has its own system. So for me, it was like, that's not fair that I have to just go and that they will assign me to any doctor that is available in my due date, and that's it. So I really fought for what I wanted. 
we even moved to to Belgium to uh, to the border with with uh, the Netherlands. So in that part, it's still not so common to have homebirth, but there is uh, more probability. Or there, there are more midwives, and there are also Dutch midwives. So I also look for it. I went to see in the hospital if I wanted to give birth in the hospital, and I had. This, and that's why I said intuition is so important. I felt like, no, here my baby cannot be born. Also the hospital that the baby should, like I was assigned, was where the brother of my husband died. So for me, even the smell triggered death. And I say this because sometimes we forget how important the senses are. and. In a sense, in the hospital, we, we have this smell of, of sickness, of sterile, you know, it, it can trigger us, our, our mind in a, in a very unconscious way. So I, with connecting with my intuition, I said, this is not the place, this is not the doctor. Also the doctor, I, I had to go to the hospital because she had to do the, the ultrasounds, but I also didn't feel connected with her. She was putting me a lot of, uh, I would like, I'm uh, sorry, I'll say again. I knew she was not the doctor because she was also putting a lot of pressure on me, like a oh, home birth is not safe, your baby is too big, uh, you are, uh, you know, like you are too thin. And she already started putting me like, like even doubting that I could give birth, you know? So I said, this is not what I want. So I looked this time for midwives. And I loved it. I found two beautiful midwives that were, one was Dutch, one was Belgian, but their approach is so different. You know, you go to the uh, um, appointment and they talk to you, not only, they don't only check the ultrasound and the measurements, and now they really want to know who you are, where you come from, what is your situation, where are your emotions? Uh, so the connection was uh, lovely. They came also to our home. Uh, so when they were visiting our home, it's like having friends over, no? you know, come have a tea, let's discuss. So that also gives you a completely different approach because you you feel connected with with the person that would be at your birth and not only like this, you know, in the hospital, it's just uh you are one number more and go fast and, and, and line and sit there and wait for two hours and all this. So for me, the, in the second birth, we also knew what we wanted and we choose the team uh, we wanted. So in the second uh, birth, I was very confident. And at one o'clock, I went to the toilet and I felt like my water broke. I felt water coming out but I was too asleep so I wasn't sure so I called my midwife and she said okay try to sleep but I'll be I, I, I will wait for your call so I slept super good and in the morning I call her I was having again no contractions I was having a little bit of leak but no pain no nothing no other signs of labor so she came by one so already 12 hours passed that my water broke. And she told me, okay, it's fine. But I just have to tell you that in 12 hours, you don't start labor. So if by midnight, labor is not like already started. We have to go to the hospital because it's the law in Belgium and we have to put you antibiotics. And, <clears throat> sorry. and we have to put antibiotics. And there I was like, with so much pressure like I say I have 12 hours to to birth you know and I, because I knew I didn't want to go to the hospital and I didn't want them to put anything in my body no antibiotic nothing so I start to feel the pressure and I was no longer connected because in the morning we also went to the forest with my kid we were super relaxed but when my midwife tell me like there was a timeline it was very triggering for me and that happens also to so many women when they put the doctor puts a, a time frame ah you have to give birth the week 40 or the week 41 or in two hours so that is just very difficult to to manage the, the mind really goes uh stressed because there's nothing you can really do 
No. So of course I said, well, let's have an orgasm because I thought this is the way it can help. So I said, okay, my love, come here, <laughs> let's do it. So indeed, I, I did have a very nice clitoral orgasm, but I must admit there was an aim to this orgasm. I wanted to have orgasms to start my labor. So it was not the surrounded and just the connection I had in my first labor. And that's what I also found very difficult to teach to women because if they know orgasms can help, but if you do an orgasm like to have an aim, then it doesn't work the same. So it's not about that. It's not just, ah, yeah, I will masturbate and then I will have an orgasm and then whoa, because it doesn't work like that. So that's what I experienced. I, I even had my orgasm. I was dancing with my husband, but something was just not, not going not kicking you know I couldn't feel I was in labor I, I could feel I was too much in my mind I went into the uh, tap also in the bathroom and there was a big clock and the clock was ticking so I was so conscious about time and then the midwife say I will come back at seven o'clock so she came back at seven o'clock and I was like oh I just have a few hours more and and that was very triggering for me until the moment it was already 10 o'clock and I felt I was not in labor contractions were there but not really established so I said can you do a uh, um, vaginal uh, touch you know she also midwives tried not to do it and I think that's very respectful so she did one which was horrible. So in my first birth I didn't have so I didn't feel how horrible it is and that's what I also I said for, for a woman that they have to have these in the hospital, routinary uh, vaginal, how you call them in English? Sorry, vaginal. Yeah. Vaginal exam. Vaginal exam, sorry. I would say it yes. again. And yeah, and ne they're never pleasurable. So no, <clears throat> unless no, no, you do no. them yourself. Exactly. I will talk about that. <laughs> so, so I was feeling, I will go back to that part. So I was feeling something was just not, not going. And I asked my midwife to do a vaginal exam. They are horrible. Actually, in my first birth, I didn't have it. So in this birth, I was like shocked. So in, in the hospitals, we like think that it's normal that they do a vaginal exam and they do very often. And they are very invasive and, and, and women can feel triggered also with vaginal exam. So we also have to know that we don't have to have all the time vaginal exams and if we can avoid it is the best midwives some midwives of course don't do it so when she did it we find out that actually my um water was not completely broken my amniotic fluid was uh, my amniotic sac was just with a little um uh, hole and then water was leaking but it was not uh completely broken so in that moment, she told me, okay, don't worry. There's no rush. We don't have any more to go to the hospital. Just relax. In that moment, I said, please take that uh, clock away from here and bring me my husband. But it was amazing because the moment there was no more time pressure, I just let myself completely surrender. And I remember my husband came in in the tap we start kissing caressing but this time i was really present i was really there into my sensations into my feelings and then i remember hearing the water broke i felt like Puck! the water broke and in that moment contractions start like really whoa kicking off but it was beautiful it was like intense sensations i i, I was again in another world completely i just remember these waves uh, of coming for me they were it was they were not painful at all they were really nice and and strong and i was uh, away uh, i also want to say the way i moved in my first birth was completely different of the way i moved in my second birth because my babies were 
different hip position and they were differently in weight. My second baby was very big, was four kilos, was a big baby. So I also have learned that that it's difficult to guide a woman how, how to move and we can know positions and everything. But I always say to women, just move the way you feel like because your body knows exactly where your baby is and how the baby needs to move to go out. So instead of asking, oh, tell me how to move, you just listen to your body. So I remember in my second birth, I was moving in a different way and that made the water uh, grow and that make also the baby to position well. And there was a moment I was feeling this beautiful light coming from, from my vagina to the top and I could really feel my body opening up, beautiful. And then I felt like the baby will come out and he came back. And that was the only moment I was like afraid. I opened up my eyes and I saw that the second midwife, because they came to midwives, enter the room. And for me, I knew she will only be there when the baby was born, about to be born. So it was beautiful because that eye connection made me feel like so protected. So like, okay, she's here, baby will come, don't worry. But for me, it was shocking that after having like feeling such a beautiful sensation, he didn't come out because the first bird was like, just whoop, you know. So she reassured me, she said, don't worry, you're doing great. Just keep on breathing. And in the next contraction, might come. So I let myself go. There was a moment of fear that I said, maybe I cannot birth my baby. And I want to say that a lot of women we might experience that fear and that is normal that we think we cannot do it uh, anymore this is too much uh, or maybe i can't and this is part of the trends we are going and the hormones what, that we are having that that might happen so uh, i just came back i remember my husband tried to touch me and i was like no don't touch me i i, I really needed to go within and then again, I felt this beautiful sensation and I could feel my body open up and my baby coming out. And then he came out, but only the head. And I, again, I was like, what? And for me, it was impressive to, to see the, the head under the water. Now there are much more water birds in the, in the internet and it's easy to see it, but I never saw a water bird like that, that you could see really the head of, of, the, of the baby. So I looked at my midwife like, what I do? And she was so relaxed. She said, don't worry, don't worry. In the next contraction, he will come. So I breathed and I touched him with my hands because I, I, I told my midwife that I wanted to receive him. So you said you want to receive him. Yes, receive him. And for me, that moment of touching my baby with my hands and feeling this power that I could receive my baby with my own hands was so powerful. And that for me is also orgasm. This, this goes beyond uh, sexual orgasm. This is just a feeling of power and confidence that is beautiful. And I think that is one of the most beautiful sensation a woman given birth can have. Because sometimes we always put like, that is, the power of the doctor they they have to deliver we even say ah, they deliver my baby you know like or feeling that you need someone to catch your baby makes you also get disconnected from what you are feeling so having my hands in in his head and feeling this power was beautiful so then i feel again this light coming up from my vagina up and i felt just all surrounded by um white light and feel my body pushing. I, I, this time I, I felt I needed to push a bit more and uh, my baby came out and was fantastic. This time I didn't feel the, the arc of fire. It was completely, for me, it was complete intensive pleasure. <laughs> Beautiful. And then again, they gave me this chance of moving to the bed slowly, putting the baby, nobody touched my baby, nobody was talking loud. They were doing video, but very discreet. And, and we let the baby uh, go up until the breast. I was impressed that when my second baby latched, I, I was breastfeeding my first baby for two years and a half. 
and still it felt like the first time it was like <gasps> so with each baby is like the first time and again I felt all these oxytocin rushing and I gave birth to the placenta also like so smooth so beautifully also like 40 minutes so almost one hour after uh, birth so, so there was no rush for that I had a baby of four kilos and I didn't even have a tear in my vagina it was like and in, wow. in the two in the two and it's because nobody told me push 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 or you know it was just like letting the body do it and when I had my baby in that moment when he started latching I, and I was feeling all this well-being I remember that was the moment I said I need woman to know this is possible and, and having this feeling of of fulfillment of power of well-being after giving birth is completely possible so i think that's where my my doula <laughs> um, mission uh, started and it was just with the aim to tell women birth can be a joyful experience and definitely a transforming experience and even if it might involve pain it doesn't have to involve suffering. Thank you, Renee. What not only beautiful stories, right, but full of wisdom, right? I I really love, I, I was thinking as you were talking about how that clock, right? As a doula, whenever there's a clock, I hang something over it because it's so true, right? In labor, we need to be in that altered state of consciousness. And when things, time, people, words draw us into feeling pressured or just into even being conscious, right? It holds us back. And you showed so beautifully how you, you know, achieve that new altered state and then we're able to really let your oxytocin flow to feel those orgasmic joy love and connection with your partner and just oh my goodness like I'm going to be re-listening I'm sure people that listen just now you're going to want to hear again because you taught so many nuggets but I know as a doula you're guiding others now if you could give and I know it's so hard to say one tip because there's probably like 20, but if you could say, what's one thing for those that are pregnant right now listening that you would want them to know to prepare for that joyful, blissful, orgasmic birth? Presence. I think that's the most important thing I've seen in women just being in their head, thinking of what will happen, what can happen, how long it is, how, and not being present. And this is being present is from the pregnancy. They are sometimes, they're worrying, um, if my baby have this, if I have that, it, I always said to them, you know what? If your baby, or if you have something, you will have the strength and the resources in that moment to face it. But don't be thinking about all the things that can happen. If now here, you are fine. So, and this presence is so difficult for them to have. And when you're present, when you go to the doctor and you're present and you feel, you can feel whether this is the person you want to accompany you or not. If you are present, if you are listening to intuition, you can say, this is not the place I want to give birth. This is not the doctor. This is not the doula. This is not the husband. <laughs> but because also you can feel whether you want the husband or not to, to be there. So having this connection where, with your intuition and listening to yourself, for example, many times women know when something is wrong at birth uh, or when something is right at birth. and Sometimes doctors don't want to listen, no? They know, oh, I'm birthing now. And they're, no, no, you say, no, 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 baby's coming now, you know? And, and we feel that we don't know. Every single woman, when it's the first time, tell me, no, it's, uh, I'm first time mom, I know nothing. And we start from that. So I always say, no, you know everything. You just need to tap with that wisdom. So that's my advice. Be present. No birth will be the same but 
you have to be the journey because also the journey will teach you. For example, now I have a woman that has been in free labor for too long, but if she keeps on thinking how more time I will be here, she will just go nuts because it's too much anxiety of thinking how much and how and how long. And if she's present, if she's present and she lives the moment, if, if she feels her body, what she needs to do, whether to sleep, whether to dance, whether to eat, and just go step by step, you know, that will make it. So presence is the most important thing. When I was present in my birth, I was able to go to this orgasm, uh, orgasmic state. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Renee. And for all that are listening, how can they contact you? Can you share your website, your social? Yeah, thank you so much for saying I have a project that is called Mindfulness, like mindfulness, but with mom dot live. So I have in my Facebook and my Instagram are mindfulness dot live. And I also uh, recently opened in Cancun. I'm living in Cancun, Mexico, a holistic center. So. It's uh, very recent. I think I haven't even tell you because we are oh, no. just opening. This is it's a great a, surprise. Yeah, it's a video. It's called um, Oma. That means grandmother in, in Dutch. And it's a, a holistic healing hotel. So little by little, we will have more uh, rooms to host people. But the idea of this center is also to be a center of uh, motherhood and and familyhood I will say when we will be hosting ceremonies seminars and all these for uh, families to be able to be connected with with their sacred wisdom beautiful mm. well and I have to say I hope to come visit you I'm sure other people listening too right definitely I, we I still have to, to do the the orgasmic uh the uh, orgasmic event in, in Mexico, in the Riviera Maya. So now you have a place to stay for sure. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you so much. And thank you everyone that's listening. I really hope that you'll share your comments and feedback and look below in the show notes. You'll see all of Renee's information there. And we're wishing you all a pleasurable orgasmic day. Thank you so much. Thank you, Debra. Bye-bye.